All right, so the last thing we're going to do today is we are going to get you started on the actual test case that we're covering today. Uh, we spent some time today talking about other things, but uh, we're also going to talk about, first of all, how to set up uh, Android Studio so that you can run the test for MP1, and also we'll sort of guide you to the right place where you need to do some work. Uh, and we'll look at the first test case together. Okay, so the, um, the, the repository that you clone has a test MP0 task. So if I go over here and I click uh, the right configuration, you'll see there's a task for test MP0. I've configured the project to grade MP1, but you do not want to use the grader as part of your workflow. When I, what, do you, what do I mean when I say workflow? I mean the process of working on the MP, the right way to make forward progress efficiently. Um, the grader hides a lot of information. It's really there just as a diagnostic. So don't rely on that to help you with the tests. Instead, what we want is a way to run the MP1 test suite that we just installed. And so I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm gonna go over here and click Edit Configurations. I'm gonna open up the Gradle uh, portion and you'll see that I already have this test MP0 uh, run configuration. And let's just copy that. This is a good starting point. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna change the name to test MP1. And then down here, instead of uh, MP0 test, I'll change that to MP1 test, okay? And then I'm also gonna click a uh, store as project file which is going to add it to my repository so that if you clone the repository on a different machine or if you decide if your laptop breaks and you need to start work somewhere else, you'll have this run configuration when you start the project again in a different Android Studio. So that's a good thing. Okay, I'm gonna click okay. And now I have a test MP1 uh, task. And so I'm gonna run this. Now, you don't wanna run the grader to monitor your progress on the MP, you wanna run the test suites. You also typically don't want to run all the test suites at once. You really want to focus in on one test suite at a time. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that too. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go into my testing code and I'm going to open up mp1test.kt. And we're going to start going through these tests one by one. So there are four tests that you need to pass to finish MP1. And we're going to go through them one at a time on each lesson. So today's lesson, we spent some time talking about other things. We had that time because this is a pretty uh, small piece of code that you need to write today. Um, but we, in future lessons, sometimes we'll spend more time talking about the test suite and what you need to do because there's a little bit more to talk about. But um, today what we're going to do is, and typically we're going to go from top to bottom in the test suite. We've laid the test suites out for you in the order in which we will see, typically, like maybe we'll make a change at some point, but um, we'll typically go from top to bottom. All right, so the first graded test suite here says, test whether the restaurant comparator works properly. Okay, so what's a comparator? And, and you'll see if you go through this test, it's testing this method called sort by name. And so I'm gonna right click here and I'm going to go to go to declaration or usages. And this is now in my models.kt file, this particular method. Now what's a comparator? Let me talk briefly about that. So you've done a fair amount of work with the comparable interface in uh, Kotlin, which is something that's inherited from Java. That establishes a canonical ordering for a certain type of object. Okay, so if your object, if the right way to put it in order, if it has a right way, then a good way to indicate that is by implementing comparable. However, there's other cases where an object doesn't have a right way, but I still want to show something how to sort it, right? Let's say I want to sort a list of restaurants, like in the UI for my app. There might be multiple ways to sort that uh, list of restaurants. We're not going to do this together, but you could imagine the app having different buttons where it's like sort by name, sort by cuisine, sort by distance from my current location, sort by rating. And so instead of providing a single sort method that you implement by extent by implementing an interface, you can provide multiple sort methods. And the way you do this, remember we talked about comparable? We said all you need to do to sort is tell me how to put two items in the right order. So a comparator is similar to comparable, but instead of being attached to the class, it's just a static method. And it takes as arguments two different instances of that class. And the idea is you tell which one goes first according to whatever sorting algorithm that particular method implements. This method is called sort by name. And as it implies, it's supposed to sort the restaurants in order by their name. It's not doing that yet. It's broken, and this is your job to fix. 
This is an example, uh, an example of a lambda method. And if I want to um, do some work in here, so for example, now I can see uh, restaurant one dot name, right? Um, because I'm on the class, I can access private fields. I'm gonna have to use some of the information in the restaurant class to complete this comparison. Now, if I uh, do return zero, what's gonna happen is, uh, right, okay, so it says returns not allowed here. If I just do zero, right, then it's going to encourage me, I think, to put this on a single line. Uh, oh, let's see here. That works, right? So I need to write some code in here. Now, and this is not hard. Um, it's not designed to be hard. It may feel hard because you just have to figure out kind of like what's going on and, and how do I do this. But the goal here is to order things by their name. Now, just to keep in mind, the name is a string um, and strings have a compare to method. And so there may be a very, very straightforward way to do this. Um, by just using the, uh, the compare to method that names already provide. So that's a hint, I guess. Um, so this is your job to finish. Now, let's look at how we're gonna zero in on just this particular test. I went back to the test suite. While I was talking, the test suite ran and you saw that took a while. And you don't wanna sit there waiting for that to happen every time. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run just this test suite. If I right, uh, did I right click? No, I just clicked on this little, uh, this little arrow here and it brings up a dialogue and I say, run just this test. And this is one of the unit tests, which means it doesn't have to run the whole app, which also means it's going to complete more quickly. So you'll see this is gonna take still a minute to get started, but now it runs and it still fails. And, um, and so your job is to finish the logic here in models.kt in this method so that the list of restaurants is sorted properly by the restaurant name. Now, two things are gonna happen once you finish this that hopefully you will find exciting. The first thing is the test case will pass, right? And you'll earn some credit on this particular MP. Checkpoint. The next thing that will happen is when you run the app, you'll see that the list of course, the list of restaurants in the app is sorted correctly. And the reason is because the library that we use to load the list of courses into the app, and we'll talk a little bit more about how that works in the future, but it uses this sort by name comparator to sort the list. And so the fact that the comparator is not working means that the list of restaurants isn't sorted properly. Once you fix it, the list of restaurants will be sorted properly and that'll be pretty cool too. Okay, so that is you know, your job for this particular uh, portion of this particular checkpoint. It's just to finish this, uh, this comparator method. If you need help, feel free to ask uh, for questions on the forum or feel free to, to jump on the help site. And we're, we're there to support you as always 100% of the way.